Good afternoon to all. My name is Marco Pelo, and my presentation is about the subject of my PhD project, the diversity and evolution of history of Atucus, a claim of New World dung beetles. Dung beetles are well known among us beetle experts for their coprophagous habits. Indeed, many of the synapomorphies are adaptations related to these feeding habits, including the soft mouth parts as illustrated here by these mandibles. There are more than 7,000 species worldwide, and the fossil record dates back to the UC. The systematics of New World and beetles has been extensively studied over the past decades, but three genera for the sheer number of species I still great taxonomic challenges in the group. My project deals with one of them, Atucus. Atucus is a widespread taxon in the New World, ranging the, from the US to Argentina. Its species vary in length from about uh, four millimeters to about 16 millimeters. And although most of them are shiny black, some show vivid metallic coloration. Unlike Many well-known groups uh, of dung beetles, males of Atucus don't bear long cephalic or pronotal horns, have at most a low cephalic carina in both sexes. Sexual dimorphism in Atucus is more common in the pygidium, which in many species has carini or, or, or spines in males only. The function of such structures is unknown. Indeed, very little is known about the biology of Atucus. The nesting behavior of only three species have been described. And the immatures only on, of only four species are known. There are some species that are known to be mimicophilus, some of them perhaps even obligatory. Others are inclined of vertebrates, particularly rodents, and the Gulf tortoise, tortoise in, in, in Florida. Uh, when we started this project in 2018, 103 available names were included in Atucus. 96 of them considered valid. However, the last and only general revision made for the genus dates from 1868 by Edgar von Harald, the great scarab expert from the 19th century who then included only 20, 28 species in Atucus. Since then, most species have been described in isolated papers. Exceptions are the faunas from North America and Costa Rica, which have been revised by my colleague, Bert Coleman. For the rest of the continent, almost nothing is resolved. We don't know how many species there are, how to identify them, where they occur, or how they are phylogenetic related to one another. Furthermore, the close relationship between Atucus and the Scatimina, as proposed in 2007, has more recently been called into question. In turn, it has also been suggested that two small South American genera, Afangium and Dentorino, are likely highly modified lineages nested within Atucus. Therefore, if this is correct, Atucus would be paraphyletic. But is this correct? Is this suggestion correct? To explore all the, these questions, my project aims to revise the complete systematics of Atucus based on evolutionary principles. And these include the investigation of its alpha systematics, phylogeny, and biogeography. But for this presentation, I will concentrate on the first part only. To conduct this part of the project, I have been relying on museum specimens. I have so far studied 65 collections from the Americas and Europe, which together totalize more than 44,000 examined and identified specimens, including the types of most of the names. Uh, for the delimitation of species taxa, I have followed the biological species concept. Therefore, when I say that a given group of population constitutes a, 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 a given group of population, populations constitutes a species, what I mean 
is that my hypothesis is that that group is a genetic cluster separated from other such clusters by biological isolating mechanisms. If it is, is later shown to be incorrect, then my hypothesis will be falsified. For the, the limitations methods themselves, I have followed, followed the, the, the traditional guidelines of, of those who are talking the biological species concept. Evidence supporting my, my hypothesis are from morphology and distribution. More specifically, uh, mostly from features that are traditionally regarded as evolutionary classic among dung beetles, such as the male genitalia and the secondary sexual characteristics. For the phylogenetic analysis, however, we will integrate these plastic features to the more conserved ones from the mouth parts and wing venation. So as a result, as a result, including some transfers from and to Atucus, we have concluded that 122 array available species group name, names belong to the genus, 90 of them denoting valid species. Additionally, 54 new species have been discovered. In total, therefore, Atucus includes 144 known species. My museum studies have also resulted in more than 3,500 geographical records from more than 2,000 localities. And the species are, of course, not even distributed uh, across the continent. As you can clearly see here, the species richness is highly concentrated in the Amazon region and, to a lesser degree, uh, in the Cerrado and in part of the Atlantic forests of Brazil. And you can also see here that the bulk of the unknown diversity is concentrated in inland regions of South America, particularly in Brazil and Peru. And other, gen other general facts can also be stated. Here you, can, you have new and already described species according to the number of known specimens and the year of first collection. You can clearly note that the more abundant species, as of course uh, expected, were the first to be collected and described, although there are some remarkable exceptions. For instance, the third most abundant species, which was first collected in 1829, is a new species. Another interesting fact is that new species continue to be discovered almost every year. 14 species have been first collected in the past 20 years alone, suggesting that more are yet to be discovered. Therefore, the, these, the, the, the monograph is probably far from being, from being complete. Um, on the other hand, you can see here that five species have not been collected for more than 60 years two of them last seen in the 19th century. One that deserves special attention is Atucus asperatus. All of the 20th century specimens were collected in a Ristinga area in the neighborhood of Galeon in Rio de Janeiro. Nevertheless, this area has been greatly, greatly altered for the construction of the Rio International Airport since the 1970s. So is it possible that the species is now extinct? I think it is a real possibility, at least for the, uh, at a local scale. A remarkable fact uh, observed by, all, by us among the species of Atucus is the existence of morphological climbs along the range of several widespread species. These climbs concern characters like punctation, shape of the PG germanization, shape of, of the endophyllites, and coloration. An uh, interesting example is the species pair Conexus and Irinus. In the area where they overlap in Western Amazonia, they are very similar to each other. However, eastwards, they are limited, where they are limited either to the, to the north or to the south of the Amazon River, they gradually diverge from each other in several characters. In other species, Atucus and Cucrius, the populations are shining black in the Brazilian savanna, but coppery in many areas of northeastern Amazonia. However, there is a gap between these populations, likely a result of lack of collections. 
how is the call of these unknown populations like? We can only answer this question with more field work. And finally, there is an example that deserves to be discussed in more detail. A tubus steroides was divided into three taxa based on the combination of the states of three characters. However, we have observed that the characters used to delimit them are not only clinal, but their clines are not synchronized. Some of these clines are very wide, such as the, the one concerning the pronotal punctation, having a rather smooth inter interdegradation, while others, particularly in Florida, are shorter and more abrupt. In addition to, to these three characters, we found a fourth cline, this related to the male genitalia. For this reason, we consider that these populations constitute a single widespread polymorphic species instead of three separate uh, taxa. But what is the origin of these clients? We have tried to formulate some initial hypothesis to be tested in future projects. As you can see here, Artucus steroides is present mainly in temperate forests. It is known that in the last glacial maximum, the North American uh, temperate forests were reduced to small fragments in the southern US. Our hypothesis is that either declines may be secondary, in which case the populations initially evolved in isolation and from one another in this refugia and later regained contact, or that these clients may be primary, a result of the expansion from a single refusion after the last glacial maximum with subsequent local adaptations and divergence by distance. And of course, it can be a combination of both. I hope to answer this question in future projects. And there are many, many other patterns of variation worthy of further investigation among the Atucus using molecular, ecological, and morphometrical approaches. This pattern include interspecific ones, such as the ones uh, exemplified here, as well as interspecific inter ones that, when better understood, can shed some light on the nature of the speciation process among the dung beetles. So to conclude, my thesis will include sections summarizing the entire knowledge about the 144 species of Atucus, including information about the types, redescriptions, of course, information about ecology, geographic and distribution maps. And the next phases are now exploring the phylogeny image biogeography of these 144 species. Particularly interesting is the participation of Atucus in the Great American Biotic Interchange. I want to know how many species migrated northwards, when they did so, and whether it was before or after the uplift of the issues of Panama, and this assuming that Atucus originated in, in South America, as most dung beetles, the dung beetle specialists, assume they did. So I'd like to thank all those institutions that provide funding for this project for this project to happen, to my supervisors for their support and trust, to the Collectory Society for the invitation, and in special to all the creators, collection managers, and collectors, the people who are making this work possible. Thank you very much for your attention.